Hi, and welcome to lesson four in our nucleus unit. Here we're gonna talk about the actual nuclear decay equations and how we write them. In our last lesson, we talked about what made some isotopes stable and what made some isotopes unstable. And we discussed the fact that unstable nuclei will spontaneously decay or emit nuclear radiation and be transmuted to other isotopes until finally becoming a stable isotope. Here we're gonna talk about the specifics of writing these decay equations and what you'll need to to do. So let's take a moment and let's remind ourselves that reference table N shows the decay modes of selected radioisotopes and that these decay modes are specific to those particular isotopes. Also remember that reference table O can show you what the particular notation is for a particular decay particle if you get confused or ever forget what's shown by the decay modes on reference table N. When we write a decay equation, we're going to represent the decay of a particular isotope. And so to do that, you're going to need the following items. You're going to want the decay mode, which you get off of reference table N. You're going to want the periodic table. And you're going to want what we call AZ notation. And so you can get this off of the periodic table. The A is the atomic mass of the isotope. And the Z is the atomic number. Atomic mass always gets written on the top left for any isotope. And atomic number gets written on the bottom left. You're going to need this AZ notation for both the isotope and whatever decay particle you're dealing with. And finally, you're going to need to be able to add and subtract, which I know probably sounds really simple, but I'll point out a couple of places where you could make a couple of common mistakes. Let's go in and take a look at how to write a couple of different kinds of decay equations. Let's do an alpha decay equation first. So this is actually not in our packet, but I want you to write the decay equation for uranium-238. If you think you can do it already, that's fantastic. Go ahead and give it a shot, pause the video, and let's play on as we go through it. But if you wanna watch me walk through this one, or if you've now finished trying it on your own, let's go through, let's go through and see how this is done. So first, I know that I'm dealing with uranium, and the symbol for uranium is U. It's uranium-238, so I know that its mass is 238, so I'm going to write that up on the top. And I know that the atomic number for uranium is 92. I can get this off of the periodic table if I forget. Now, I know that it's going to go through an alpha decay, so I'm going to draw an arrow to represent that this unstable uranium-238 nucleus is going to produce an alpha particle. I'm going to get the notation for that off of reference table O if I ever forget what it looks like. This is what an alpha particle looks like. It's got the same composition as the nucleus of a helium-4 atom, though of course it is a particle of nuclear radiation coming out of the nucleus of the uranium-238 atom. There are actually two ways that you can write alpha decay that are both acceptable. You see these both on reference table O. You can use either one that you want. It's totally fine. But please just pick one and use it. Now that I know that uranium-238 is going to produce this alpha particle, I need to figure out what the daughter isotope is going to look like. So for that, I'm just going to use conservation of mass rules, and I'm just going to do some subtraction. So 238 minus 4 is 234, and 92 minus 2 is 90. So now be careful. Uranium had an atomic number of 92. It does not have an atomic number of 90. So in order to figure out what the isotope has become, I actually need to go to my periodic table, go to the atomic number of 90, and write down the symbol for that, which is thorium. And so you can see this here. This is the complete decay equation for uranium-238. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have, and then let's move on. Let's try a beta decay example now. So I'd like you to write the beta decay equation for carbon-14. Pause the video, take a moment and do it on your own. And then when you're ready, hit play and let's go through it together. So it's carbon-14, the symbol for carbon is C, the mass of carbon-14 is 14, and the atomic number for carbon is 6. Carbon-14 is going to produce a beta particle. I can go with either version off of reference table O. Both are acceptable. And once I have that, now it's just a matter of doing some subtraction. 14 minus 0 is 14, and 6 minus a negative 1 is 7. Please be careful of that, right? 6 minus a negative 1 actually increases our atomic number by 1. So please take a moment and make sure that you're absolutely careful that when we do beta decay, you're making sure that the atomic number goes up by 1. It's a very common mistake that students make when they're learning how to do this. Does this example make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions, and then when you're ready, let's go on and look at a positron example. Let's do a positron decay example for potassium-37. Again, pause the video, try it on your own, and then when you're ready, let's play through it and talk about it together. 
So potassium 37, the symbol for potassium is K, and the mass is 37. The atomic number for potassium is 19. I can get the atomic number off the periodic table if I ever forget it. I'm going to draw my arrow, and now I'm going to write my positron notation. So there's two ways of writing a positron. I've chosen one or the other. It doesn't matter, but I have to pick one, and I shouldn't write both. Once I've picked which one I want to use, I'm going to then put my plus sign to show the isotope that's going to be produced. 37 minus 0 is 37, and 19 minus a positive 1 is 18. And so that's argon, and notice that in this case, it almost looks like a beta particle, but it's positive one instead of negative one. That is a major difference, and it's the only difference really between a positron and a beta particle, so it's something to be careful of. Finally, let's look at a K capture example. This is not in your packet, and in the your region's curriculum, you wouldn't be expected to know this, but some radioactive isotopes, rather than emit a particle, they will actually capture an electron from their electron cloud and be converted into another isotope as a result. We're going to do that for gold 195. So here we've got gold, its atomic mass is 195 and its atomic number is 79. And since this is K capture, it's going to capture a, an electron. And so I'm going to put that on the left side of my arrow. Here's my notation for an electron. It looks an awful lot like a beta particle because there's really not much difference between beta particles and electrons. And then I've got my arrow. And finally, now I have to do a little bit of addition. So 195 plus zero is 195. 79 plus negative one is 78. And so our new isotope is going to be platinum. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any of the questions that you have, and then let's move on. You may have noticed that there's also gamma decay listed on reference table O, but gamma particles are not nuclear radiation in the same sense. They do come out of the nucleus, but they do not consist of matter. They consist of a high energy particle of light, what we call a photon. And so as a result, it is not going to change the identity of the atom. When thinking about gamma decay, you can think about the nucleus as being in an excited state, and by releasing that gamma particle, it goes to a less excited state. But it still remains the radioactive isotope that it was to begin with. So when we do a gamma decay, if we ever have to write one, it's not going to affect the identity or the mass of our isotope. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of how to represent nuclear decay through decay equations. Make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can determine an isotope's decay mode based on reference table N. If you're given the identity of any isotope, can you go to reference table N and use it to figure out what the decay mode is? Also make sure that you can complete nuclear equations for alpha, beta, positron, and K captured decay modes. If you can do all of these things, then you're doing great. If not, take a moment, write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them in the comments below the video or get in touch with me through the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.